I'm going to show you some various components of the machine. This is the dish that goes on the back of the machine, that big dish that spins as you're traveling through time. It's made out of a sheet of aluminum, eighth inch thick. Um, I would have spun it myself, but there was no way I could tool up for it. But I was very lucky to find this a metal spinning company in Vancouver, Canada that had a tool, a shape, a wooden shape, that they were able to spin this. And it's very close to the original, so it, it worked out great for me. And then um, recently I've been working on the control lever for the machine, which is a, a crystal lever. I've uh, turned this out of copper on a lathe, and there are some various other little metal components that will go to it. And eventually the crystal will sit like this in the lever. This piece, which is right now a prototype made of plastic, will eventually be made out of green marble, which I'll be spinning on a lathe as well. So this is the console which gives you the date and time and the control of your traveling. And what I've done is I've made 200 rivets out of brass, which will um, make it look very, uh, like a very Victorian in construction once these brass rivets are applied to the machine in various places. Um, for the, the, uh, the speedometer, if you want to call it that, the odometer that's going on the, uh, the timeometer that's going on to the console. Uh, I, took, uh, I made a, a foam cutting machine, which is a very hot wire that cuts um, this insulating foam. And I was able to use this brass plate, which I cut out of 11 gauge brass on a scroll saw. And I put it onto the foam, cut it on a hot wire, Do I believe time travel is possible? Well, from what I know about it, it's, uh, if it is possible, it's probably very impractical. It would be great to get it to work, of course. I mean, not just be uh, uh, an object to look at, but something you could take a ride in. Part of my goal in building this machine is just expanding my uh, knowledge of craftsmanship and, and working with materials I haven't worked with before. But I also think of my machine as possibly being an heirloom, something that I could burden generations to come with. You know, they'd be wondering, what are we going to do with this thing? Why did, why did great grandpa make this thing? And can we sell it? What, you know, so I guess it, it, it serves generally basically two purposes for me. The, the process of building and burdening generations to come. If somebody announces that they have built a time machine in their basement, all I can do is laugh because that violates the known laws of physics. However, if one day somebody knocks on your door and claims to be your great, 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 great granddaughter, a few thousand times removed, well, don't slam the door because it is conceivable that perhaps our civilization, our puny type zero civilization, which uses oil and coal as our supply of energy, may one day possess galactic power as a type three civilization. And when you become type three, then there is the possibility, just the possibility, that perhaps you can open gateways through space and time and then meet your illustrious ancestor way back in the 21st century. Now, my colleague Stephen Hawking, the great cosmologist, has stated in the past that he doesn't believe in time travel because where are the tourists from the future? We don't see them taking pictures of us. However, my attitude is the following. If you're walking down a country road and you see an anthill, do you go down to the ants and say, I bring you trinkets, I bring you beads, I bring you nuclear energy, I give you the secrets of time travel. Or do you simply step on a few of them? Well, the distance between us and ants is similar to the distance between us and a type three civilization. So we are so arrogant and conceited that we believe that we're worth visiting from the future or from civilizations in outer space. What makes us so interesting that a civilization that advanced, that can go between stars and galaxies, would be interested in a puny type zero civilization like us. I think there are three main reasons now why 
Don Teeter's story has continued to have such a large following even for the last five years now. Um, the first one is that the post John left behind caused a great deal of controversy between the people who read him. Nobody can seem to agree on exactly what he was saying or trying to say. The second thing is that there's no definitive proof that he wasn't exactly what he said he was. Um, there's lots of things that could be checked out that people have tried to check out, but nothing has come forward to say that John was not a time traveler. And the third thing is, is that the people who are just now discovering the story are watching the things that he talked about unfold after they read it, and that, that's freaking a lot of people out. part when I got hired I didn't take much credence in what was happening I figured I'd get paid as I do for a lot of clients and then my son who's uh, 19 years old his name is Brandon is now a student at the University of Central Florida started going through the sites and so on and said dad you won't believe what's going on out there um, he's told me that people have investigated where I live where I work apparently people have taken pictures of the office I used to occupy which has kind of annoyed the people that I used to work with over there um, I had a call a few months ago from a guy at Hustler Magazine who said, uh, would you like to be interviewed? And the first time around I hung up because I just thought it was a friend of mine playing a joke and it turned out to be somebody really at Hustler Magazine that wanted to do um, an interview of me. And one of the proudest moments of my life will probably be that I'm now mentioned in Hustler April 2005 edition. And I'm also referred to as a pricey entertainment lawyer and it doesn't get any better than that. I estimate at least two, maybe three more years before the project is completed. Will it, um, will it end in divorce? Will it tear my family apart? I don't think so. My family's been very kind in indulging me in my, uh, my crazy obsession with building my time machine. Um, I, I think we're at a point now where my two daughters, who are seven and four, probably think that all dads are building a time machine. Some of the downside of this though has been that I have been, um, I've gotten lots of crank emails and phone calls. Um, the postings on the web have found where I live, who my family members are, not only my immediate family but in-laws and, and my family and so on. And so I do get a little concerned about whether or not there might be somebody that might come out and do something crazy. I get at least six or seven death threats a week. And they're all in huge capital letters. People that want to come to my house, beat me up, you know, find me, how dare I spread this. Oh yeah, we get about six or seven of those a week.